Hello everyone, this is Darwell20 and welcome to episode 32 of Darwell20's Omnifactory Let's Play series, where today I'm very proud of the work I did in my basement. You guys ready to see it? Are you? Are you? Boom! Look how fancy this looks, huh? Way cleaner feeling. I think it looks cleaner at least. You guys, you guys can leave me comments and let me know. Uh, so let's look at let's look at real quick what I worked on between episodes. So we continued the pattern that we set up last episode of interfaces behind. I'm going to talk about this in a minute, um, and then uh, you know outputting to the back. I've also got separate rows going on here, and each row gets its own uh, MV. I think I need to put batteries in here, but so far I haven't needed to, so we're going to see. Um, basically, depending on how the mod that adds the CEF works, I may or may not need to put batteries in there, but I don't know if it's super important. Uh, but we'll see. We might wind up putting some in there. And they each um, feed their line of machines, right? Uh, and then down here, we've basically got our ME conduit and our energy conduits, right? And our energy conduits are feeding the CEFs, right? And each of the... Um, the, the ME conduits are feeding the interfaces. Um, you'll notice that they typically go to the second interface in the line because they have to go underneath um, the energetic alloy here. Um, well, this one does, the, the rest are, um, you know, well, they kind of all do that. So long story short, uh, that's how it's set up. This guy I had to do a little bit differently because this is an advanced cutting machine that needs water. So I needed some way to get water into this machine um, and it had to be from the side, so basically decided to leave it and uh you know have have the water coming up from over here where we're pumping water into some other machines um so these two rows share an mvcef but considering that all these machines plus my blast furnace plus three other things used to share an mvcef i think we'll be okay so we'll see and i might i might restructure things i considered using like the uh phantom face for that but phantom faces are beyond my tech level they need another star uh, so they're a bit of a hassle, right? So that looks pretty good to me, right? Doesn't that look good? So check this out. I'm going to boop, and I'm going to boop, and I'm going to boop. In fact, let's, let's boop you there. How cool is that, huh? D dire wireified. If I do say so myself, I look at, think it looks pretty... Fancy. I kind of left a lot of holes to clean up so you guys could see like how much neater it looks. And a few of these things we could throw facades on to make it even cleaner looking. But I think it looks good, dudes. Like how how good is this? Right? We can throw uh, some horizontal wall stuff going on in here. Not too shabby. We're going to need another bit of terracotta, but that shouldn't be a problem. Cool. Right? Look at this. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Not too shabby, huh? And if we wanted to, remember, we can put Ender IO facades up there to, to really cover stuff up, but I don't even know that it's necessary. Let's do a build to me on that one. Looking good, right? So yeah, I'm pretty proud of the work I did on my basement here. Really, really quite proud. Um, I could probably actually fix this up a little bit better than I have. This is for uh, some fluid stuff I got running upstairs. Yeah, buddy. Nice, super, super clean. Right, so I don't know what I'm doing this episode. I just know that I'm really proud of my basement. And we have way more space for all the machines that we're probably gonna eventually need, right? So everything that's here um, is pretty much what was in my last one, right? Uh, in, in, in the basement prior to this, but now it's it's way neater and I've, I've added a few things. Now, one thing I wanna draw attention to, which I'm also super proud of, is this design that I set up. Um, I was working on this between episodes because here's the deal, right? Last episode, we wrapped up with the fluid extractor and we wanted to keep soldering alloy in the advanced assembly machine at all times and this one we want to keep polyethylene in the advanced assembly machine at all times and we set up an export bus of polyethylene sheets to melt down and then transfer directly into the adjacent machine right that sounded good on paper but then i sat down and did some math and i said wait a minute 
This machine can hold 64 buckets of polyethylene. And this machine can hold 64 buckets of polyethylene. And we get 144 millibuckets per polyethylene sheet. So I'm like, math, 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 math. That's a thousand sheets. That's a lot of sheets. I don't want to burn up a thousand sheets just to sit there idly. How can I filter and make it so that only a little bit of polyethylene is kept in there at all times? So I looked for the RF tools fluid monitor and we don't have RF tools in the pack. Womp, womp, womp. So I'm like looking around, I'm looking around. I don't see anything that can really measure fluid amounts. So then I said, all right, what if we threw an Emmy fluid storage bus on the machine so it can read how much fluid is in here? And then we threw an Emmy fluid level emitter on the machine. And then we set the export bus to respond to a redstone signal, right? So this guy reads the amount of polyethylene in the machine. This guy says if it's less than 200, emit when levels are below 200, set up a redstone signal that dumps polyethylene in there. How cool is that? I think it's super cool. So like, I'm gonna, just for like an example here, right? I'm gonna bump this up to 300, right? So if I got a tank, to demonstrate this with because tanks make this easy to demonstrate, right? Uh, an empty tank, preferably. Yeah, this one. I can use this to take the polyethylene out of here. So watch what happens when I take all the fluid out of this machine. You ready? The redstone signal turns on and then it starts melting and then the redstone signal turns off. See? And it melted a few sheets and it filled it up a little bit. So I've done that a few times as a test, right? Um, which is why we have 16 buckets in there. But we'll eventually burn through all that and then this automation will kick in. How cool is that, huh? And I have the same thing set up here uh, to measure the amount of soldering alloy we have and exporting of soldering alloy ingots. Pretty cool. Now this guy needs to craft, so we have a crafting card in there, right? But he does the exact same thing, right? When we go below a certain amount of soldering alloy, boom, the signal turns on. He starts melting soldering alloy ingots. We start getting a bunch and then boom, he turns back off. How cool is that? Now, the reason it took a while to fill up there is it's probably currently crafting soldering alloy ingots, right? So, so you know, that craft is occurring now and it threw the 10 in there that it made because it makes 10 at a time. Cool. So, good times? Yeah, remember soldering alloy ingots are made 10 at a time in the alloy smeltery. So that's what's up. I was pretty proud of that design. I, I was really happy with it. Um, I got the idea from, cause I, I popped into the uh, Omnifactory, there's a discord for it. And I was like asking questions about some mechanics of Greg Tech that I didn't fully understand. Um, and then I'm like, by the way, is there anything in this pack that can read fluids? And somebody mentioned like, uh, I think the only thing that can do that really is the fluid storage bus. Technically this could be on its own sub network. It doesn't have to be connected to my network. And this would probably break if I was storing polyethylene in a disc, but because I'm not, it's not breaking. If you wanted to store polyethylene or uh, alloy fluid in a disc, you would need to put this on a sub network. Cool, just as an FYI. And everything else is nice and fully automated. I think one thing I should move over probably would be this guy. This is the recipe that handles cables. Frankly, I should be doing the exact same thing with rubber. Um, like we should be exporting rubber and melting it into the adjacent inventory and doing the same thing with cables. I'll probably move that eventually. Um, but for now, my basement looks pretty good and I like it, right? Totally rearranged all the wiring, got it nice and clean. Hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, definitely feedback, please. Looking good? Proud of Dyer? I hope so. I also got the skinny, as it were, on going to space, uh, which sounds like a fun time. So apparently um, none of the other planets in the solar system have origin except the moon. Um, so we can build a rocket ship, we can go to the moon. There's useful origin on the moon. Um, specifically like there's better, there's, there's certain ores that are found more commonly on the moon. And there might be even some that you can't get aside from going to the moon. Um, but I'm not sure if I wanna do that now or if I wanna hold off a little bit. I think I wanna hold off a little bit and, and, and advance further more into tech. Um, I think what I want to do with today is play with biodiesel and glycerol and get down to the point where I can generate power based off of uh, the canola seed farm that I set up a couple episodes ago. So I thought originally an episode or two back when I started processing this stuff, like we would get into oil-based fuels. I want to try both and see which ones I like better. Um, but I've definitely got the refinery outside, which we're going to need for a bunch of stuff anyway. 
right? Like, it's not like I wasted my time making that refinery. We needed to do it for the quests to unlock a bunch of stuff. Um, but now we can also look into glycerol. Um, so biodiesel is a decent renewable source of power that can potentially run your entire base given enough pro crop production. Please note that even if you prefer petrochem products to generate power, you'll need to do some biodiesel in order to get glycerol, which is needed in epoxid, whatever that means. Uh, but I'm <laughs> good times. Looking forward to it. So um, between episodes, I, I did make a canola press quickly. Um, and just completed the quest by getting myself a canola oil bucket. It's literally you just hook this thing up to power and throw canola in it and you're done, right? Um, so I might I might want to uh, do that a little bit more efficiently, I'm thinking. Um, maybe throw a few more canola presses together. I don't know. We'll see. But basically, lava is holding me over pretty well. But if I really want to generate any serious amount of power, we need to get away from lava gen as our exclusive power generator. And I'd like to, to kind of have both working towards me, right? Um, we might want to eventually rearrange how some of this power gen works. But long story short, um, the only other thing I want to make sure of is can I generate... Um, so I can get refined canola oil and I can get biodiesel, right? Um, but what can I do with biodiesel? Does it only generate EU? Because I'm only seeing a biodiesel generator. Uh, there's also the diesel engine, um, but that might, oh, look at that, that's a multi-block for EV power, huh? Cool. Um, so it, it probably generates a decent amount. Um, all kinds of things generate power, obviously, right? Um, oil generates some power. Neat, methanol, rocket fuel. Ethanol, biodiesel, 256 EU per millibucket. That seems like a lot, right? That seems like a lot. A bucket would then generate 256,000 EU? Right? I think so. So that could be cool. One other thing I might want to work on too is there's a quest here that says early rutile. This is going to get me access to titanium. Uh, which I need if I want to make a wireless terminal, right? That needs an EV emitter, which needs some tier four circuits. Uh, and it also needs a Fluix Pearl, which is the standard recipe and titanium plates, uh, which needs titanium, which we need to make a vacuum freezer to make. Uh, and we get hot titanium from a blast furnace, magnesium dust, which I'm pretty sure I've got, and titanium tetrachloride, which is rutile dust and carbon with chlorine. So most of this stuff is familiar to me and I can make, right? And I think I even have some rutile because you can get that from something that I've been centrifuging. I've been centrifuging or electrolyzing something, bauxite. If you centrifuge a lot of bauxite dust, you get a little bit of rutile and a lot of aluminum. Right, and I haven't needed bauxite dust for a whole lot. Um, in fact, I've got a lot of crushed bauxite that I should probably, I think I've got my HV dude down here. You, you still have a lot to do, buddy? Yeah, you do. Cool. Um, I've, been, I've been doing a lot of, you know, this work too, because we need a stupid amount of aluminum. I, I have constantly not had enough aluminum down here. Um, and I also have my centrifuge up and running. So a few of these guys I've been doing stuff like this with. So now this will centrifuge up my impure aluminum dust and get me aluminum and some bauxite, I think, too, uh, which is cool, right? But I can throw bauxite dust inside my advanced electrolyzer. Any fluids in you? Nope. Um, and he takes a while to run. As you can see, he's very slow to process, and he eats a lot of bauxite dust in the electrolyzer, 39 of them per craft. But you get like 16 aluminum dust, and then you get two little pieces of rutile, which is nice. Um, so I might want to consider doing that, but I, I'm, how do I want to do this? I really want access to that wireless crafting terminal. That would be super cool to get, but that means making a vacuum freezer, and also we need to get into tier four circuits. So here's what I'm thinking. Um, power is doing okay right now with lava. So why don't we get into wireless pattern terminal, wireless crafting terminal, so that we can we can do that cool stuff, right? So let's do that, right? So I know to do this wireless uh, crafting terminal, right? Uh, hopeful, I'm not sure how the infinity booster cards work. Um, the tooltip doesn't usually update. The, the recipe's rather cheap to make an infinity booster card. So I'm hoping it just has infinite range and then we should be cool. But if not, meh, we'll figure it out. Um, so let's, let's, let's do the thing. Like, I want to do that. I want to do rutile so that we can get that going. So first off, I need rutile dust, right? Ta-da, quest complete. 
How easy was that? Oh, well, that didn't go anywhere, did it? Um, but I know what I need to do. I need a vacuum freezer. That's ultimately what we need. That's the only machine that we don't yet have to make this work. Um, so I think, first off, we can start with small circuits. Now, this machine is way cheaper, the assembler. So let's teach you how to make small circuits, right? Um, so small circuits. Ah, bah, 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 bah. All right, maybe not. Uh, small coils, my bad. We can add you there like that. So you go in here. Is that a annealed copper or normal copper? Normal copper and a steel bolt, which I might need to teach you how to make steel bolts. But I can throw you in literally any assembly machine um, because uh, not the molecular assembler, the assembly machines, these guys. It doesn't matter because it doesn't need fluid. If it doesn't need fluid, it doesn't matter what machine we put it in, right? So that's cool. Um, so if I want coils now, can you make one or do you have to have steel bolts? You need steel bolts. So I need you to know how to make steel bolts. So that can go into a cutting saw with a steel rod. And that gets four of them. And we do have a cutting saw somewhere. I think it's called cutting machine. There you go. So now you can make a steel coil for me. Sweet. So you're getting your steel rods. You're doing the thing. And then you're making the, that. Cool. That was quick. Hooray. Nice. All right. So first tier four circuits is the refined processor mainframe. That is going to really unlock. Hey, look, vacuum freezer. Neat. That's what's next. Cool. And HV assembler we get access to. Cool. Um, so the other benefit down here, by the way, of having each one of these lines have their own MV outputs is we can swap these lines around and turn them into HV lines if we wanted to easily. Right. All we do is you know, move some machines around and then put an HVCEF on the line and boom, we have an HVCEF line. And that's super cool. Um, but that's just, you know, another thing. So the next doohickey that we need to make is going to be you, right, buddy? So let's turn you off. Let's go up to this thing and let's teach this pattern. So this needs tin or soldering alloy, right? So you're going to go in that guy. And you're going to come down here. And the soldering alloy one is this one, right? But I think this interface is full. So what I'm going to do is get another interface. Because this is our plan when things happen like this. And a conduit. And this pattern can go right in there. Cool. So now, right, refined processor mainframe. Boom. So the only thing I need to learn how to make because I think I know how to make everything else, is these stainless steel frames. Cool. So let's get these added to the auto crafting list. So you can be made an assembler with nothing with these components, but you need configuration one. So we should keep that in mind. So do we have an assembler down here with configuration one? Because I'm not sure what your assemblers are. Your configuration eight, and you don't have a configuration at the moment. So why don't I throw configuration one in this dude? Because he clearly doesn't need one. Right? That seems fair. So do we have a circuit I can borrow? Yeah, one of you. Cool. Now, are you happily making more of those? Or are you, like, stuck on something? I need to keep an eye on things, because I definitely might have broke something along the line. Yeah, you're not making any more refined processor arrays. So the trick is, it's not making it because it's missing something. Manganese dust? Oh, we need more stainless steel. Really? Do I need more stainless steel? I guess so. I used a lot of it. I should learn how to make manganese dust. I know how to make that. I know how to make that. Uh, we'll figure that out in a sec. Let's get you added here. But we're going to need stainless steel for, um, for all that stuff we're doing. So if we take a look at you, now we're going to say that we are also short on manganese dust, right? Because you know how to make stainless steel rods and plates, which you need to make your stainless steel frames, but now we need manganese dust. Because I taught it, so stainless steel, you know how to make stainless steel dust. I taught it how to do that. It's a combination of iron dust, nickel dust, chrome dust, and manganese dust, which I'm trying to remember, pyrolusite, shielite, tantalite, right. Um... <laughs> pyrolusite you get turned into crushed pyrite 
So I've got some of that that I that I paid coins for. I haven't been able to find any in the overworld. Um, I haven't been able to find any in the overworld. That makes magnesium dust, which is different than what we need. We need manganese dust, right? But these guys should make manganese dust. So they'll pulverize into that, which we can then pulverize again into that. And then you make a little bit of manganese when you centrifuge. And how about you? Are, are you the same? Crushed, grossular, ore. Right, and that makes... Oh, I thought it did. Somehow, some way, it made grossular. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's confusing. You know what? There was another one. There was another one. It was limonite or something like that. Limonite ore, I think, made this. No, not limonite. Uh, it's a green one. It's something greenish. It's olivine. Olivine. Do we have olivine? I thought this also made it. And I thought I found a vein of olivine. I might be crazy, but I feel like that's right. Olivine, can you electrolyze into magnesium, iron, and silicon dioxide? Really, dude? I thought you had a way to make this stuff. Manganese dust. There we go. There we go. Manganese dust. So when you centrifuge olivine, you... Or when you... Yeah, when you centrifuge the impure version of it, you get a little bit of manganese. Cool. So do we have some of that? We do. We have tiny piles of manganese dust. Nice. Cool. Because I got a bunch of olivine... Um, I found an olive bean mine and I mined it. That's right. I remember you now. I remember you now. So I'm putting this ore away. I'm going to put you guys away for now because that's not exactly what we're working on. Kind of working on the rutile thing. Uh, so now, if I wanted to make the mainframe, we're cool. Nice. So let's, uh, let's just hope everything works out. So you're making more refined processor arrays because we have manganese now in the system. You're making a bunch of stuff uh, and you're filling that guy back up and you're making more of those and this guy's coming together to make all this stuff. So lots of crafting in progress. We'll be right back. Also, just real quick note, right? Manganese dust, right? We have 80 of them. Each one manganese dust equals nine stainless steel. So basically, we have 80 times nine stainless steel because we've got 80 manganese. Now chrome, we might be a little bit low on. Yeah, we could probably do with some more chrome. That I think you can get from pulverizing ruby ore. And probably when you hit that again and then the impure gets you some. So that's, that's not bad. I think we have a lot of ruby ore, right? Don't we have a lot of ruby? I feel like we have a lot of ruby. We have a little bit of ruby ore. This will get us more chrome. I feel like we have a lot of ruby ore. Oh yeah, we do. Told you we had a lot of ruby ore. That's not bad. Uh, you find that with redstone. And I know that my one of my miners picked up ruby at some point. So you're still cooking over here, right? You're dealing with all my crushed bauxite. Good job. You're doing ruby next. Cool. So finish up your crushed bauxite because I need that ruby when you're done. More chrome, good things. Uh, crafting progress. We are cooking, cooking, cooking. So one one of the things is the blast furnace is doing a lot of auto crafting for us now, right? Because um, he does the stainless steel ingot from dust. He's also doing the energetic alloys. So we have lots of crafting going on here. So that thing's a little bit slow by comparison, but it's fine. We'll, we'll probably wind up keeping some stuff in stock again. All right, dudes. Wow, that's getting us towards all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, that's actually, I feel like, an important progression step for this pack, right? And we got some Omnicorders. What's up? That's going to buy us a whole bunch of cool stuff for that. Vacuum freezer. Time to make one of those. Uh, vacuum freezers um, are a multi-block structure, so we're going to need a few things here. Uh, mainly used for freezing hot ingots into regular ingots. However, it can also freeze other substances such as water, which is cool because it makes crushed ice, I think. I think we looked at this briefly. Um, we can use that to cool our magmatic dynamos and make them more efficient in terms of, we'll still, I think, generate the same RF per tick, 
but will generate more total RF per bucket of lava, which would be nice because it just means like, you know, we're burning through lava pretty quickly at this point, let's be honest, right? So that might be a cool thing to set up. So I definitely want to get a vacuum freezer going. So um, it's a three by three by three structure with a hollow center, right? Um, and we're going to need an input bus, right? And a fluid input bus and energy input hatch. And then we're going to need output bus and fluid output hatch. So does that have to be HV you think? It says HV, uh, but I don't know if it needs to be HV. Amperage in up to two, internal capacity 8192. Like everything's saying HV. Do we think uh, it has to be HV though? Cause like, like when I looked at the refinery, it said everything needed to be EV and that wasn't true. But I mean, I could just make everything HV. I think we could do that, right? I think we could do that. Blast furnaces galore. <laughs> oh my goodness, you keep wanting me to make more blast furnaces. I've got one, it's enough. It's enough, you want me to make more. You want me to make more blast furnaces. So just to be clear, I guess I'm gonna try HV for everything, cause why not, right? So you need an input bus and an input hatch for fluids. So input bus and an input hatch for fluids. And then you need an output hatch and an output bus for fluids, output hatch and output bus for fluids. And then you need an energy input hatch, just one. And then you need the vacuum freezer itself. And then in addition, we're going to need nine and 18 and one, two, so 20 frost proof machine casings. Right, so we need 20 of these if I'm not mistaken. Well, that don't look too bad. It's just aluminum plates and some of those aluminum frames, which we already know how to make, right? I could even throw it in here if I needed to, but I don't think I need to. No sense, we, I don't know if we're gonna need to make a lot of these in the future. It's the same recipe, so there's no sense making it down there. So yeah, let me make this all off camera and come right back. Let me tell you how glorious it is that I spent all the time getting up all the auto crafting downstairs working properly because I just easily made an HV electric pump. So like no more of making the steel rotors by hand, no more making the medium stainless steel pipes by hand. Everything automated beautifully and I love it. All right guys, so I think I've got the vacuum freezer ready to roll here. Uh, now this is gonna need HV power. So that's something we're gonna wanna keep in mind. So I'm thinking I might want a dedicated HV CEF for him. That's what I'm thinking at least. Uh, so gold cable, are you done? Boom, vacuum freezer, that's what's up. Hooray! So that unlocks a few things clearly, including cryogenic air distillation, which sounds like a good time. And that looks like one of the first modular machines. I think there's a lot of modular machines in this pack, which is cool uh, and I'm excited about because that's a fun mod. And, and I think he added a bunch of really neat stuff to it. But let's figure this out first, right? Uh, so the first layer is gonna be a three by three. And remember, this is where we're putting all the things, right? Uh, and then we need an energy input hatch, right? In fact, let me put you on this mode. See, see why I did this, right? Uh, that, right? Um, and then what do we have here? So uh, on the left of the vacuum freezer is an output bus and on the right is the input bus, right? Uh, so output bus and input bus. Right, and then if you're looking at it from the back, right, uh, you've got input hatch on the left, output hatch on the right. Input hatch on the left, output hatch there, right? And then this guy in the middle, and then, yay direwolf, I masked it right. Now, do you build correctly? Hooray, vacuum freezer. Cool, so 1024 EU per tick HV, that looks cool. All right guys, so I taught the system how to make the HV CEF, because I suspect I might need a few more of these in the future. But what I'm planning to do basically is, uh, well, basically right here is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna pop that dude there. We're gonna put some energy conduiting there. He's gonna get his power, right? And then I just need, my 4X Vibrant Cable, which I taught it how to make. 
and he is probably still crafting because I have a lot of crafting going on. Remember a minute ago when I laughed about making another uh, blast furnace? I probably shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Suddenly everything needs the blast furnace, right? Everything needs the blast furnace. I need the blast furnace to make energetic alloys. I need the blast furnace to make vibrant alloys. I need the blast furnace to make stainless steel. I made all <laughs> I shouldn't have made a joke. I shouldn't have. It was a mistake. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Minecraft. I'm sorry. Please don't hate me. Um, so yeah, long story short, I'm making vibrant energy, uh, vibrant alloy cables right now. I am strongly considering... Um, doing the uh the assembly thing for a rubber like i did with the others because it would just be a little bit quicker right now especially when you make 4x right because each cable needs four rubber so i need to melt 16 rubber to get the 4x vibrant cables but it's all good because we've got a couple and that's cool and also i'm making a few more hvs because i want to try upgrading my blast furnace so i'm gonna have to get another hv cef which uh i think i'm gonna kick off right now hv cef where are you at i think i asked for an hv machine hole which is probably being crafted. Yeah, he's making the stainless steel for that. Once that's done... You know what? No, I can do it now. HVCEF. Make another one of those. I would just like to try um, and see how much faster the blast furnace is if I convert these guys to HV instead of MV. Cool. That's just... I'm just curious, right? So you're the 4X version, right? So you should be able to do that. And then you should be getting RF. Nice. We got a vacuum freezer. Cool. Now to get titanium ingots right because that's kind of the next thing i want i don't know if that's next on our list of to do's but nuts to the to-do list canthal ingots is a thing that we need apparently at some point um i remember needing that for something and i don't remember what i think it was something hv some kind of machine an hv machine needed canthal i forget what but that doesn't matter uh titanium ingots right uh we want we want we want titanium ingots right so to make that we need to blast freeze our hot titanium which needs magnesium dust and titanium tetrachloride, which is rutile and carbon with four chlorine in a chemical reactor. Okay. Now, do we have chlorine in a chemical reactor somewhere? I feel like we do. I feel like we do. One of these dudes... No, 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 we don't. Chlorine is the thing we don't have a lot of in a chemical reactor. So we could get it, though, right? Do we have a chemical reactor up here? We do. And you've got a lot of water in you. So what I think I'm going to do is remove you. Though it shouldn't hurt. Cool. Do you need uh, some kind of circuit in you? Not really. So I'm going to take you out for a minute. So what I need is four buckets of chlorine, right? Now this is the advanced electrolyzer. And you've got oxygen and hydrogen going on. Because that's another thing you get from the bauxite processing, right? Uh, cause, eh, you, let's get salt, right? Impure pile of rock salt. I can purify you in the centrifuge. And I'm doing it here, not downstairs, because remember, any salt we get will be exported into our production of polychlorides, right? So I want to get the salt going on, right? So remind me how much chlorine I get per salt. Two rock salt equals one bucket of chlorine. Okay, that's not bad. So why don't I get like a dozen? So well, let's get 32 rock salt. That sounds good. So that'll be 16 buckets of chlorine. And that'll be enough for four ingots. That should be cool, right? I might need actually a little bit more. Let's do 64. Let's just do a full 64 buckets of chlor of uh, or 64 rock salts. Right? So we'll give this thing a few minutes to process. We'll get our rock salts. We'll get the chlorine made. And then we'll try out making that stuff. While I'm waiting for that, let's get... Um, so if I'm going to get 64 buckets of chlorine... That's going to be 16 of these. So I need 32 carbon dust and 16 rutile dust. Right? So I've got 10 rutile. I should be able to get 32 carbon dust, no problem. And remember, rutile comes from centrifuging um, the bauxite. Right? So that should actually, we should have some more of that over here. Yeah, there's four more rutile and some aluminum for us for later. Because we always need more aluminum. So what I'm going to do is, at the least, I need a little bit more of you, right? So let you process. You you wind up making lots of hydrogen and oxygen. And I've sometimes thrown an, M an, an enemy import bus on that guy just to suck that hydrogen and stuff in. But, you know, it's all good. Can I make a quick pump for that? I probably can. No, it's a uh, piston. Piston, piston, piston. Those are fast to craft, right? That shouldn't take long. 
Man, you're still making your uh, stuff over here, ain't you? Yeah, look at all this work he's doing. I'm going to take you out of there. Let all that crafting happen. Do we have extra cables? Do we not have extra cables? Did I turn them all into that fancy cable kind of thing? Ah, uh, there's some quartz fibers. Fluix dust. Please. Yeah, the auto crafting revolution. It's the bomb. Loving it. Love and have auto crafting. It's super. It's super nice. All I need really is one of these dudes. So just to hook this up, it just goes like this. Fluid import bus. Boom. Cool. And then you're gonna pull all the hydrogen and oxygen into our system, just to have it for later. All right, good deal. So yeah, this thing takes a really long time to process your rutile, but I don't know that there's another better way to get it at this stage, of course, right? I think we can get, you know, impure piles of rutile, which come from uh, rutile ore, but I think you only find that up on the moon. I might be wrong. You might be able to find it on the overworld. I'm not sure. Does it, I wonder if it has a, a purchasable thing to it. No, you can get it from microverse projectors, which I totally don't know what these are, but they sound cool. I like the idea of a microverse, or a miniverse, or a tiny verse, some kind of verse. All right, give me the last little bit of, there you go, sweet. So there's the 16 of that that we're gonna need, right? Um, so I think actually I'm gonna stop you from running now. That's fine. And we'll come back in a minute when, so we actually want those rutile, and I want the carbon, 32. And I need, uh, are you done yet? Nah, he's got some time left. So we'll come back in a minute when he's done with his remaining half a stack. Cool, we we'll right back. Actually, you know what guys? We have reached the wrapping up point for the episode, I'm sorry to say. So why don't we do this? Let's wrap up here. We'll come back next time. We'll melt this stuff down, get the fluids we need, get the titanium we need, the hot titanium. We'll transfer it into the freezer. We'll freeze it up. We'll make titanium ingots. And then we should be able to get a wireless transfer, dude. Does that sound cool? Um, in the meantime, how are you doing? You're doing pretty good on power, but you could be doing better. See, this is why we need improved power situation. Like all these guys are cooking, but look at this thing. It's cruising. He's working hard. To be fair, I do have an HV machine running. He's processing a bunch of this crushed ruby ore to make me more chrome dust, right? Because we need that. Uh, we probably have a handful of other machines running at the point because I can only assume I've got some, yeah, some stuff cooking, right? Lots of stuff cooking for all the things. Um, mostly a lot of you cooking. You're doing a lot, energetic alloys and stainless steel. So I'm a little bit nervous about upgrading this guy to HV while we don't have better power gen, but that's, I think, our next task. So wireless access to AE followed by better, better power gen for us, and I think that would be cool. All right, that'll 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We'll come back next time, and take it easy.